Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I have for you a stable house, a fancy medieval stable house that is. And this is actually quite similar to the classical medieval home that I always like to build and actually the one that was more recent, I think last month we did this. So this is the one we'll be diving into today. It's a little more difficult just because of the shape of the build, but it shouldn't be too hard to get used to. So with that said, let us begin. So the floor plan is quite simple. It's all it is, I should say, is a five by seven here for the livable side, and then a five space five, and then com coming back down with a five and mirroring it in the front, or an 11 by five. And then I'm adding andesite in all the open corners with the feet as well. And here at the front door, I'm just adding a space where the door will go, and then a floor of your choice using birch. Now mind you, the long portion of the building will not have a floor, as that is for the horses. So now for the walls, we're going to start with the posts. We're going to build up a total of five more tall, so it should be a total of six tall from the foundation all the way around at the corners. And then we're just going to fill in with stone bricks everywhere in between the posts. And this is also including where the birchwood planks are and the grass for the stable is. Now at the top of the posts where all the andesite is, I'm adding feet facing out, or the staircases upside down facing out I should say, except for in front of the horse stable, there is no staircase there yet. And then here on the side, this is the only part that's a little bit different, it's the staircases upside down and then one on top pointing inwards. This is just to add a little depth to the build in the future. So we're going to start with the staircase first. So at the far back corner from the wall, we're just going to start in the corner and then work our way up all the way to the top of the stone brick wall there. And then a floor of your choice again here at the top. I'm just going to continue with birch and we're going to build one higher than the stone brick wall. And of course, I'm just going to clean up the area a little bit by adding in the oak stripped log right there to separate the staircase. Now for some building framing, here on the upside down staircases we're going to put the one log upside down and then we're going to build up a total of five tall from there. They're going to go up two and then up one and then go right to the peak. And do the same thing on the back side, so go up a total of six tall or at least five tall from the base of the logs placed. Then here on the side we're just going to add in the cross log there and then you don't have to use oak here, especially if you're building survival, this could be a little bit tricky or resource heavy, but along all the corners, or at least on top of the stone brick that's visible, I've been placing the oak logs. Now, again, this probably wouldn't be resource friendly in survival, but that's just what I choose to do. Then here on the far side for the frame, this one's a little bit shorter just because we want the roof to be slightly lower. So it's going to go up a total of five. But instead of going up a total of two, it's going to go just a one at one and then straight to the peak. Now for the little tricky windows, these little side windows here. So from the end of sight, we're going to go in one. So you should have a gap of three in between, but we're going to be one lower than the oak log. And then, of course, link it up just like the rest and then to the same height as the posts and then a peak at the top. And then one last window here. We got the same thing as the front, except it's next to the large window. Now we're going to start with the walling. I'm going to use calcite, and all we're going to do is follow along the innermost ring of the oak. So in some areas it will be inset by one, in other areas it will be flat from post to post. As you can see here with the outlines, just pay attention to where it is. The biggest areas that will be inset by one are the parts behind the tall peaked frame. Then all we're going to do now is cross hatch all the logs so that they link up. So just be mindful of how you're placing the logs. We want them to essentially just meet up where they do at the natural heights of each other. That's why I wanted one roof to be a little bit lower so the roof had a little bit more depth to it. That one extra block does make a difference. Do not worry, this is not what your house should look like at this point. I just didn't like the way Replay Mod came out for punctu puncturing out the holes for the windows and the doors. So we're going to start here on the bottom floor, the front door. We're going to go up to, mind you, we want to make sure there's a one space gap here on the inside. 
Then here at the top, we're going to go up, just two. And you can do three on the big windows if you really want. Then for the little window here on the side, I'm just going to do two. Then directly underneath, here in the center, you're going to want to cut out a total of three. And we're going to go up a total of four tall like that. Then we'll do that for both doors. This will be where we can bring the horses in. Just like that. And then here on the side, again, you can do two or three. I'm going to go with two since this window is a little bit shorter, or the frame pitch, I should say. Then another two right there. Then here on the big window, I'm going to match the front one, which I did a solid three. And for the rooftop here, I'm going to use the green terracotta. And all we're going to do is follow along the tops of the logs or the outline that we've already done one time. And make sure you have an overhang of one as well in all of the places applicable. And then one more little minor detail here for the bit front of the building. We're just going to create like a little decorative box on the front just to give it some more shape. So this is in between the small corner and the big roof there with the log going up and the square around. Then we got one more we're going to do here on the back side of the wall. And it's on the opposite side or the adjacent side with might be a little bit larger. I didn't do the count on it. But you should have a square like that just off to the side of the andesite staircase. Now for the details, a lot of the details will be repetitive, but I'll show you the front face here. We're going to do a lot of the oak fences, our traditional build. If you've been following me for quite a while, you'll know exactly the details that we'll be doing. With the little staircases at the top and the staircases bracing it. We've got some bushes down there on the bottom with the spruce wood trap doors just flanking the windows. It gives it a nice texture and breaking up of all the blandness that comes with the two kind of light colors and just adding bits here and there just to give the building more life then here for that little decorative box i just added a draping bit of azalea bushes with some upside down stone brick staircases to close off the stables just to give it a little more shape then again with a small window we're just going to do something a little bit simpler because we don't have much room to work with with the windows and the staircases pointing in now this window only differs in the size just because the framing of the roof is a little bit lower than the other. So I'm not going to make it as tall just so we can allow for the staircase over the windows. As you can see I'm adding feet to the bottom of the building as well just to make it look like it's more braced and less flat. And a lot of these are just repetitive from the other side. Then here on the long side I had a chimney for the original but I don't think it needs a chimney so I just added little bits of patterns here and there to break up the solid white and gray texture and made it look like it was super braced on this side. And there we have it, a simple medieval stable house. I didn't think it was too, too bad. It was a little tricky in some spots just to explain, that's why I had to go back and edit a little bit of it and show you guys the up close for the windows. But with that said, I hope you guys are enjoying these videos and if you do have a request, do leave it below in the comment section, it does help. Give me an idea of what I should be building next. And there was a user that did mention boats and Harry Potter builds. I haven't forgotten, as I am still working on those. So, as always, until next time, see you later.